Hey, I'm painting my goalie mask right now using three different colors here, silver, white, and black. And those colors come in these spray cans. Uh, and uh, as I started, I read the directions because you should always read the directions for things like this. And it says here that the coverage is 25 square feet for one can. Now, the number 25 happens to be a perfect square. What that means is if you took this can of paint and sprayed it in a sh the shape of a square, it would be exactly five feet on each side, five by five, right? Because the square root of 25 is five. That's the three colors. Uh, over top of the whole thing, I'm gonna do a clear coat. This one, this is a two component paint. It's got two things, you, you press both ends and they mix inside here. And uh, because of that, there's less paint in there. And it is, it says on the label that it's only gonna cover seven square feet. Now seven is not a perfect square, but you could still take the paint, take this stuff and spray it to make a square. Now, how would you figure out how big the side would be on that? How could you estimate the length of the side of that square that is seven square feet? Well, I think we should look at that right now and see if we can figure out. So we're looking for the side length of this square here. Seven's not a perfect square. There's no whole number you can multiply by itself to give you seven. But nonetheless, there is a square root of seven, and we're gonna try and estimate that right now to say one decimal place. Now, you could just go to your calculator and get all kinds of decimal places uh, for what the square root of seven is. But it's important to be able to have a sense of what that number could be without touching your calculator because it's not that hard. So we're going to try and visualize this first and then uh, see if we can come up with our estimate. Now there's a square uh, the size of the bigger square, an area of 25 here. Now we're going to vary the size of this square, make it smaller and see if we can get one that's approximately 7 and then look at how long that side could be. Uh, we make it smaller. There's another perfect square right there, whoops, almost there. 16 is a perfect square because it's exactly four on each side. Nine is a perfect square because it's three on each side. Four is a perfect square, two on each side, one, and so on. Now, what we're looking for is an area that's about seven, which is right about there. That's about as close as I can get to it. Now, as you can see from this, since seven is less than nine, you know it's got to be less than three right and since seven is bigger than four you know that side length has to be bigger than two the way we're going to use for our estimate here is we're going to try and pin the number in between two whole numbers by knowing our perfect square so if we know that seven is between four and nine we know that its square root has to be between two and three and we can even try and guess as to maybe what the next decimal place would be because it's not a whole number. If we guess that first decimal place done based on the fact that seven is say closer to nine than it is to four, right? It's only two away from nine and three away from four. So we probably know it's about, you know, it's, it's gonna be closer to three than two. So by the looks of this, you're gonna estimate that it's probably 2.6 or 2.7. That's about the best guess we can do. Now we're going to go back and look at this on a number line because we don't need to have this fancy uh, interactive thing to make this guess. All we need is to visualize a number line. All right, so there's a number line. We're going to put numbers on here two different ways. We're going to put the usual way you might put numbers on here. One, two, three, four, five, and we'll just go up to six here. But then on top, we're also going to label them as to what those numbers are the square root of. So We'll start at the top here. 6 is the square root of 36. 5 is the square root of 25. 4 is the square root of 16. 3 is the square root of 9. 2 is the square root of 4. And 1 is the square root of 1. Well, 0 is the square root of 0 as well. But we're going to use those numbers in the middle there because the one we were looking at was we want to know what the square root of 7 is right? Square root of 7. And if you're thinking about where that is, it's got to be somewhere between the square root of 4 
and the square root of 9 because 7 is between 4 and 9. So you know it has to be in here somewhere, right? This has to be in there somewhere. Now where you put it, again, we said 7 is a bit closer to 9, so I'm going to put it a bit up there, right? And then you can just estimate how far in between there it is. It's got to be 2 point something because it's bigger than 2 but less than 3. So if we're trying to estimate what that is in there, 2.6 or maybe 2.7 would be a good estimate. All right. Now, as I said, you can check pretty quickly on a calculator, which we'll do right now. But uh, it's important to have a sense of what it is and use perfect squares like that. You use two known perfect squares on either side to make your estimate. 4 and 9 are both perfect squares. You know it has to be between there. Now we can see how well we did by checking it on our calculator. All right, so we wanted to know what the square root of 7 was. So if we do that, square root of 7, now that's about what we estimated, right? Because we estimated 2.6 or 2.7, and it's about halfway in between there. 2.6475131311. Now it's important to realize that even though this calculator is only showing nine decimal places, this would actually go far past this if the display could show it because square roots of numbers that aren't perfect squares have an infinite number of decimal places. They're like pi, they go on forever. Now we can check that by just saying, you know, we can go 2.6, say, because that was our first estimate, and we square that. Well, we're getting a little bit less than 7. 2.7, if we square that, that's going to be a bit too big, right? If we do the number the calculator gave us, or at least a few decimals of that, 5, 7, Five. Let's stop there and square that. That's going to be a lot closer to 7, right? 6.99999. That's a really good estimate. All right, but the point here, the idea here is using perfect squares to estimate square roots of numbers that are not perfect squares. Let's do one more example here quickly. Now, let's say we were looking for what the square root of 53 was. We're looking for the square root of 53. So what we're going to do to figure that out is put it between two square roots that we know, two perfect squares. So you think, what two perfect squares are on either side of that number that I know? Well, the nearest perfect square I can think of less than that is 49. All right? This has to be bigger than that, right? And has to be smaller than the next perfect square above it. The next perfect square up is square root of 64. Right? So it has to be between those two. It has to be bigger than square root of 49. It has to be smaller than square root of 64. So it has to be between this number is 7 and this number is 8. It's got to be in between there somewhere. Now as to where we put it here, it's, you know, 53 is quite a bit closer to 49 than it is to 64. So I'm going to say it's probably about right here somewhere. And maybe I'm going to say it's about 7.3. All right? Now we can check on the calculator to see how how close that is. So if we now do our square root of 53, 7.28. So that's pretty close to 7.3, right? If I um, if I do my 7.3 squared, I won't be that far off, right? A little bit more than 53. Square root's actually a little bit less. But all in all, a pretty good estimate, I would say. All right. So there you have a method for estimating the square root of a number that's not a perfect square by using two known perfect squares on either side of that number.